introducing was... us. Oh, I love him. He looks like Robert Donut in Goodbye Mr. Chips yes, at the he moment. Does. Doesn't he? He yeah. is. Doing that British thing. <laughs> well, um, how are you all? Thank you for coming. Is anyone there? I can't see them. I can only hear them. It might just be a laugh track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tracy. Oh, they are. Yeah, they're there. Um, hi. Hello, Patty Marks. We, we know each other a little, yes. so, so this interview is rigged, really, when I ask her questions. <laughs> I really know the answer. Yeah. Um, Let's just cut out all the banter and let me ask you, does Judy Dench hate your guts? <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit concerned, <laughs> um, but no, evidently not. Um, she accepted an award and said, I'm Tracy Ullman. <laughs> <laughs> and she, when she left a couple of meetings, she pretended to steal things. <laughs> no, she's, she's been a really good sport about it. I don't know about Maggie. I don't know, dear. Um, you know, one never knows. I haven't heard from Maggie. But, uh, no, Judy's been fantastic about it. And the, the makeup's just stunning, isn't it? It's amazing. How about the uh, bosom? Did that, what was, uh, that's yours, right? <laughs> No, 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 no. Um, I was walking around Richmond dressed as Judy Dench, and uh, I had to wear this quite a big padded suit. And um, to cool you down in all those prosthetics, they put this sort of tube up your leg with a sort of cold suit. So I was followed by a little man with an oxygen tank and some ice. <laughs> and people thought we were filming another Bond. So um, Floris Schuler is a Dutch sculptor makeup artist who i found in london and he's done some astonishing makeups he's really quite brilliant um so i have him to thank for that makeup and angela merkel he does a brilliant angela merkel makeup that was amazing yeah. I don't know, when i watched the pilot at home with my friend paul who's here he said, that really is Judy Dench. I said, it wouldn't be <laughs> Judy Dench on the Tracy Ullman show. Yeah. But it's amazing. Um, Angela Merkel, is she a, a friend? Or are you just stalking her? Why did, how do you decide who to impersonate? I like her very much. <laughs> I just like Angela Merkel. Um, I wanted to be her, and, but then I have to find my take on them. And I just thought that maybe she thinks she's very sex bomb, sex bomb, sexy. <laughs> and everybody is trying to grab her and um, sexy, sexy. So, and the hair's puffy and it's too much beige. So, I love her. I admire her as a politician too. I really do. Um, and she's got like, oh, what a task she's got dealing with this whole Brexit thing and everything. I do feel sorry for her. Uh, so, and who knew she'd be so popular, Patty? I never know. Um, Time Woman of the Year. I just, well, and then the German, they put it on their news, me as Angela Merkel. <laughs> no, they did? And you think, what the hell? They think it's so strange. I got it translated. They were saying, why this British girl wants to be our chancellor, our mutti? So but she, I do, I want to be her. If she has, like, pneumonia, you could fill in for her for a day. <laughs> Um, but somebody, actually, a very nice German waiter came up to me in London and said, I want to thank you for uh, uh, making a German character funny and warm and um, very nice on British television. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, and it's kind of one of the first ones. <laughs> you don't normally get the funny ones, those funny Germans. <laughs> <laughs> it was unusual, you know. Um, so... No, I like her. I really want to meet her. You could now, couldn't I you? I could, yeah. yeah. As I say, I could stand in for her. Uh, how do you decide who to impersonate? Um, well, I just look at society, I think, every few years, it seems, and I just decide who... I wanted to do these national treasures in England, like Maggie Smith and Judy Dench uh -huh. and um, Helen Mirren and you know, uh, Camilla Parker Bowles, who you'll see in another show. Um, <laughs> And uh, that didn't go down too well with the palace, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> but I doubt I'll ever be a dame. You know what I mean? And never mind. Um, 
<laughs> so I, 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 don't, I like to be the real people and the famous people and the political people. And and because I'm such a hybrid of an American and an English person, I like people that, you know, you can respond, the Americans can respond to too if I'm making a show in England. And it's if I can do the impersonation of it. And if I really sense that I can do it well, I, I get excited about it. Is there anybody you, you think you could not impersonate or would never impersonate? Um, I know I'll have a crack at everything. Uh, I, there's nothing I can't quite, if I listen long enough or I watch something about somebody, um, I think Kate Mc, McKinnon is, it does She's a great really job good, with Hillary she? Clinton. I could never, I hadn't never thought to try and do Hillary, it's brilliant. Yeah. She, but she, makes her somebody she wants her to be. She's made her this kind of enthusiastic kind of, you know, well, because she's not really funny, she, Hillary, you know, but she's made her funny and warm and it's, it's finding that angle on a, a character. She said her interprets her more than Yes, her. I think she interprets, yeah, which is probably what I'm doing with Angela. <laughs> but, no, I don't know. So no, you look exactly no, like I do. Angela. <laughs> How long does it take to put the makeup on? You um, notice I like all these makeup questions. I know, it is, a, it is a ridiculous thing I do with these makeups, you know, and I get in at five in the morning and they encase my head in rubber for the day and I walk around padding on and, as I say, pipes to cool me and it's... You have to stay calm, actually. There's nothing worse than some stupid guy from the crew walking by and going, are you all right in there? <laughs> then if I go, I will panic if you don't, you know, it's like, don't say that, and you know, or you'd, I remember that day we shot Angela on the plane there. It was pouring with rain. There was, we were on the middle of an airfield. There was no toilet we could use. I think we, you know, we eventually, like, we had to drive two hours to a location, and I'm in all this, you know, kit, and you just think, what am I doing, you know? Uh, but, I love it. I, I love being anybody but me. I love transforming, and I play a man in the hmm. series. That you're, yeah, <laughs> I play oh. this like man with a bald head, and a he's like this sort of disenfranchised white male, doesn't like women kind of works in a Starbucks kind of guy creating apps, and he is objectionable. Everyone wanted to punch me dressed as him. That was a tough. And do you? What's it like to be embody a different person? Do you do you empathize with them? Do you yeah, sort of I feel like that person. I don't hate anybody. I impersonate. I don't. I think all my characters. I I have. They all have endearing qualities mm -hmm. to me. I do it out of loving them as opposed to well liking. They have to have some endearing. I don't do any good. The body out and out horrible. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, it's really weird being dressed as a man. It's an odd thing to do. And I, you know, pin a little birdseed penis onto my leg and stuff. And, well, you have to feel real about it. Things like that. And I remember when my kids no, you were do. younger and they'd come and watch me filming, they'd go, you're insane. Why do you want to do this? I went, don't pick on me, I'll come and pick you up from school dress like this. Um, your Get daughter was in the pilot. She my was daughter was great. in the pilot. Mabel. She was uh, the... Younger interviewer of yes. the what, criminal that applied yeah, for the job. Yeah, she wanted to be in that sketch. She's never been an actress, Mabel. She, uh, but she I do know it. from <laughs> um, <laughs> my source, Kevin Klein, <laughs> that she accompanied you as a two-year-old to LA when you did "I Love You to Death." And would you <laughs> tell the story about her on the airplane? Oh, uh, Mabel was one of those menopausal toddlers. <laughs> Do you know those really old soul kids? And I was in a play and she got quite theatrical or saw the theatrical world and working with Kevin and Phoebe and everybody. And she was on a plane with me and coming from somewhere and that the, the air stewardess was doing the pointing out the exits, you know, and that, the days of that and the thing and the stubbing out the cigarette. When she finished, Mabel called her over and she said, you are marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. And it was one of the older, probably the Delta, you know, the 62-year-olds. Thank you, dear. <laughs> but just, it was just, you know, that was Mabel. And then when somebody said, do you want to be an actress like your mommy? She said, no, I want to be something useful like a mm -hmm. nurse. 
And now she is? And now she is the director of an international medical charity. Mm -hmm. And she worked in Parliament for five years and uh, came very close to getting elected. But she decided to take the day off to be in that sketch. <laughs> she just said, I like that sketch, I'll be in that one, she said. Um, where did all these impersonations come from? I mean, I hate to be Freudy, but um, you had, you had a, a, a childhood that um, memoir writers would kill for. <laughs> Um, your father died when you were six, yeah. reading a story to you, which mm -hmm. is, is not a way to encourage reading. Yeah, was... um, and do you think that that was, um, made you an impersonator? I just impersonated everyone in my village, in my school. Um, that's why I had the titles this, uh, of this show be me as a little girl on my mother's window still in her bedroom mm -hmm. because I realized I've been doing that show the Tracy Ullman show since I was six you know I used to uh, I just cheer my mum up I guess particularly mm -hmm. when my dad died I was put on these shows in her bedroom you know I guess we all did as kids you know I'd do the put her negligees on and pretend to be Edith Piaf or something you know. oh, yeah. <laughs> rubbish we Sing all rubbish that. and her and my auntie Lydia go, oh, she speaks French, it's incredible. <laughs> I don't know how it's happened, Lyd, I don't know how it's happened. And I would just do these shows and, and every night singing my hairbrush and then I just kept doing it. So I just gather all these characters and things in my head and just that's it. And I, I just impersonate people, just like the kids can play the piano or kick a football, I just start. And then that. you went to professional children's school, which always <laughs> oh, makes God, me yeah, laugh. That's awful. Um, yeah. And then you, I, see, I could play Tracy Ullman Trivia Pursuit <laughs> and win. Um, and then you were a pop star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had a brief. Yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, I was a. And of a when I first came to America, I worked for MTV. I was like, what I did, I was a VJ for like. And what. I know this story, let's hope you do. Why did you, um, <laughs> why did you give up being a, a pop star? Can I tell you I, why? Can I, I, you, want, you I know, want you to tell, tell me, the, remind me. I want you to tell the underpants story. Oh, oh my God, no. That no? was when I stopped being a dancer because oh, yeah, okay. I went on stage with no knickers on, which wasn't good. I'd come in from the beach and I'd put on my pantyhose. I hadn't put any pants over the top. I remember they, we were doing this dance and I realised that he was about to turn me upside down in one of those cartwheel lifts. And the, you know, the director- He did or you yeah, just said did. no? Yeah, he did. It was like, uh, you know, I was like, Jonathan, I don't, don't, I've got no knickers on, I've got no knickers on. Which I eventually made a sketch out of that on the Tracy Ullman show that got no panties. So it could eventually become comedy, but so uh, that's when I stopped being a dancer. I got fired for that. <laughs> Uh, oh no, okay. Well, it happens all the time. You forget to put your knickers on. And then why did you stop being a pop star? I tell you, I, I can give you a hint. You, yeah. I give you a hint. What? Right. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I liked, I was never really a singer. I mean, I was never Chrissy Hind or, you know, someone could really say. I just had fun. I had Paul McCartney in my video. I, I think know. On, I had a crush yeah. on him in fifth grade, and I still do. Yeah. What is he like? Oh, he's lovely. Oh, he's that lovely. He's really mm. lovely, Paul. <laughs> I love him. I love him. And uh, I, I was always a pop star for a bit. It was fun. It was just something. I tried everything, you know, and I did these silly videos and dressed up and did characters. And then uh, I remember I used to have to go on all these pop shows all over Germany and Holland and here and I was always bumping into like Stanley Lauper would always be around you know and people that could really do it <laughs> and I I remember once being on a Dutch TV show and it was all crazy crazy Tracy Ullman crazy crazy oh she's crazy <laughs> <laughs> and he and on a live TV show he went <laughs> Hey, we're having crazy time. And he put a rat on my shoulder, <laughs> just to be really crazy. And because I, I thought, oh, this is it. I'm not doing this anymore, it's just stupid. So that was the end of the pop career. So luckily you had a lot of talent, so you could keep crossing the things off the list. 
And then you did TV, and then you did TV, and then you did movies, and then you did TV, TV, movies, movies, yeah, TV, yeah, movies. Yeah. <laughs> TV, TV, and, and every yeah. TV show had Tracy Ullman. In the, in the Always put your name yeah. in the title. Yeah. That, that, what the TV guide, you can, you know, otherwise, how are you going to know what the show is? What are you going to say? My inner self. <laughs> Call it something like that, they'll never be able to spot it. So. Do you like doing TV or movies better? I like television. Because it's good, it's great. It's the gals, particularly. You mm -hmm. know, it's, I get to do what I want to do, I get more control in TV. I, um, and if it's not good one week, you got to do it next week. Uh, I love television. I love the, and it's very spontaneous. Movies are great fun if you can get them, but they just, they take too long. And mm -hmm. I love doing I Love You To Death with Kevin. That was, we had the most fun doing that film. That was great, great fun. Um, and we've remained friends and ever since. When you do a TV show, you get to be a boss. And when I get you to be the boss. Do a yeah. movie, you get bossed around. Yeah. So uh, I can see. I look good on a small screen. I look much better on a small screen. Yeah, That's always been my know, theory as well. Have really big screens. But I, I just love, I was always so influenced by Gilda Radner uh -huh. and Carol Burnett <laughs> and Lily Tomlin and Imogene Coker. I remember first coming to America and sitting watching your show yeah. of shows. When I first came to America, James L. Brooks wanted to do the Tracy Ullman show with me, and he said, but you must learn about America and American TV. And I went to the wonderful American Television mm -hmm. Museum of Television on, I think it was on Fifth, uh, Fifth Avenue then, and I was pregnant with Mabel, and I used to sit with my, you know, snacks and watch Lucille Ball and watch your show of shows and watch Ernie Kovacs. And I, and I got to watch all that stuff that you'd all grown up with. I got an education in it, and that's what James Brooks told me to do. And it was fantastic. And I realised what we'd stolen from you and you'd stolen from us and this incredible crossover all the time of British and American humour. And... By the time I came to do the Tracy Ullman show, I felt kind of integrated. I, I understood society here more, and um, it was a great help to me. And were British comedian ends then like American? I mean, we, we had... We didn't have as many great women on TV as early as you did. Um, you know, a woman didn't read the news till like the 70s in England. I mean, I always say about it, you know, it's like you had Imogene Coke, you had Lucille Ball, you had, you know, Gilda... Mm -hmm. We had Benny Hill girls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you all like Benny Hill on PBS, remember? I mean, it was just being chased around in a bikini. Did a little, ooh. Mm -hmm. Did a little, ooh. <laughs> you know, it was, we had nothing going. It was, we had wonderful character actresses, but nothing on television. So, and when I saw Carol Burnett and everyone, I thought, wow, this has been happening in America for so long. Yeah. So, it was, uh, they were a huge influence on me. Who do you watch now? Who do you like now? Um, well, I'm, I think girls are having a great time of it. I would really appreciate Tina Fey and Amy Poehler bumping it up on Saturday Night Live and making it a girls' show too, because it was always such mm -hmm. an alpha male show, I thought, for so long. Um, I've, I watch lots of different things. I'm, I, I, there's a, there's a, like we, we're talking about Fleabag, an English show that I just mm -hmm. watched. I like, Love anyone it. watch that? I like yeah. Phoebe Waller-Bridge. That's different to me, I like that. Uh, so, I watch t tons of different things, I but I still too. like an American experience. I like those Ken Burns things. <laughs> I like that sort of, I sit and knit. I'm getting older, you know, I knit and watch Ken Burns. Oh, you learn so much. Oh, Roosevelt, he was wearing those calipers for years. He couldn't stand, you know. I love all that stuff. Or the West, what was that? Hey, da, 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 hey, da, 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 hey, da. <laughs> Ken Burns has given me a great education. <laughs> he has. He's brilliant. I love all that. Love PBS. Um, you really do knit, don't you? You wrote a book about knitting. Oh, God, I know. <laughs> um, I'll try everything. Look what I've done. I've even written a knitting book. <laughs> oh, God, I've done everything. Well, what do you say about knitting? Like, this is how you do it? You <laughs> pearl. <laughs> pearl. <laughs> yeah. Pearl. Uh -huh. so it's a... a friend of mine told me today, when I told her that you were knitting, that she, when she was in college, they all knit. And one professor... And she's in the audience, so shout it out if I got this wrong. One professor said to a girl in the class, you know, knitting is a form of masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl said, 
You do it your way, I'll do it my <laughs> way. <laughs> wow. Maybe it's time to take questions now. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, what else? Do you sleep a lot at night? I'm getting to the end of these questions. <laughs> oh Let's um, see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, what's that? Is that Patty? Let's see. We won. <laughs> um, Tracy, many comedians come from a musical background, mm -hmm. like yourself. Yeah. How do you feel music? One hit wonder. Yeah. How if do I'd you ever feel? written anything. <laughs> how do you feel music and comedy feed each other, and how has it done so in your career? Ha. Huh. Next. I don't know. I mean, it's just something I can do, you know, a little bit. I can carry a tune. I mean, Ka uh, Carol Burnett mentioned her again. She can really sing. Um, it's a great asset. I mean, look at the show I do. I mean, I, I like tap dancing. Guess what? It's in the show. You know, I just, I learned a little bit of everything at this ridiculous stage school I went to as a kid. I mean, I went to sort of like a school in England that was sort of like the fame academy, but we didn't break into wonderful choreographed, you know, <laughs> routines in the hallways, and it was just full of anorexic kids that used to be child stars, you know, and it was, <laughs> I hated it, I hated the place, but I learnt a little bit of everything. Except like math and science. Yeah, <laughs> we did that in the oh, afternoons okay. for about 45 minutes, <laughs> you know, and, um, I found it a lot of fun. I learned lots of little bits which I've applied in my career, but I think I'm really first and foremost a character actress. I'm not, but I, I, I love, I, I do love to put song and singing character within my shows, and I think that's a, an asset. Next. Very 90 Second okay. Street Y kind of questions, you know, <laughs> sort of scientifically based and intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of. Don't you love oh. the fundraisers on PBS? They've got to stop the Peter. They've got to stop the Peter, Paul, and Mary shows, though. <laughs> I mean, you can't keep asking people to send in money to puff the magic fucking dragon anymore. I'm sorry, we need some new shows, don't we? And I love, I love public television, but come on. Ken. Then the do what? Shoo up, shoo up. Everyone's 109 who watches PBS. Oh, Ken Burns is going to be sad to hear that. Okay. I'm an African-American gay male. Yeah. Um, who Can I impersonate <laughs> you, please? <laughs> who adores you oh. and your varied characterizations. Mm -hmm. My favorite. Ruby Romaine. Oh, isn't that Ruby Romaine? <laughs> Donald Trump's cousin, oh, I'm guessing. Horrible. Yeah. What was your inspiration for this? Ruby no, Romaine. Who was your inspiration for this potent force? Thank you. I, yeah, that's one of my, you know, like Angela Merkel's been a bit of a breakout character on this show, but yeah, Ruby Romaine was like a, a racist uh, alcoholic. <laughs> and who knew? Everybody seemed to have one in their family. Whenever I did that character, people loved it. And I get letters saying, we had somebody like Ruby work in our office and we hated her. And then when she <laughs> left, we really missed her. <laughs> <laughs> Should be Trump all the way. I tell you, he's got it right. He's got it right, that fella. He's very sexy too. Sexy as all get out. Um, I, I remember somebody, there was a woman called Romaine who worked on a Woody Allen picture. And she had hair that like that, the cotton candy floss kind of hair. Um, and then there was like these older makeup artists in, in LA who would say things like, this used to be a beautiful town. Now it's turned on the boom shakalaka town. <laughs> and uh, when I was working with Claudette Colbert, oh, she stank. Um, you know, they would just, they would have all these old Hollywood stories, you know, and they, they wear the pink capri pants, and I just love that kind of America that doesn't exist anymore, or we think it doesn't. You know, when they're driving those great big cars and just see their little heads, <laughs> you know, they're driving those and they're smoking, and uh, they're still out, there are a few of them, voting for Trump, of course, you know, and it's that 
America that when I first came here was, you know, more out there, and uh, it's kind of gone. It's kind of gone. I don't know. I don't I know. Mean, it's going here in this <laughs> but room. But that's Ruby Romay. I love her. She, she's the kind of person to keep a Christmas tree up all year because it's company. <laughs> it bursts into flames in August, and she cut. But I just, yeah, she's, they're out there, the Rubies. I have a question. It's not on a card, but you're really, really famous, and I imagine people recognize you. Is it hard to, like, sneak up on people to do research? <laughs> No, they don't really recognize me. It's funny because yeah. I dress up so much. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Or they think they don't, if ever anyone does, they're kind of nice to me. They just go, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you're like my crazy cousin. <laughs> you know, I'm never like the person that one goes, oh! you know, like my very good friend actually is Meryl Streep. And people just go, oh! you know, it's like being with Jesus. If you try and walk around <laughs> town, it's exhausting, you know. <laughs> Or, but you know, me, it's like, I'm just a wacky friend. I don't know, it's okay. People don't Here's one, I recognize think. me too much. Would you please say, hello, mommy, it's Kay? No. Oh. Would you or hello, not? Hello, mother, it's Kay. Yes, dear. Oh. Yes, Kay. Kay is in the show um, because she's, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Back in England, you know, so she's so English. And I loved that Kay worked in America. It used to just amaze me because Kay Clark was worked at my bank. <laughs> um, yes, hello, virgin. Yes. <laughs> and she was so, you know, like little, you know, polyester outfit. And she was worked in my bank. And when I first went to America, I remember I had to call her from you know, L.A., and I'm calling Kay Clark in, you know, Wallington, Surrey. And I always remember her saying, <laughs> hello, Miss Allman. <laughs> How's Hollywood? <laughs> it just killed me. <laughs> and I stupidly said, ah, uh, have you ever been, Kay? I mean, why? She went, oh, no, no, Mother loves Joan Crawford, though. And it was, <laughs> it was just, she killed me. You know, she didn't, wasn't ever going to go anywhere, and she'd never done anything but be with Mother and... I love her. She breaks my she's heart. She's been on a lot of shows. Yeah, she, she, she comes back. She's in this show. Yeah. Yeah, we've got, I found a woman to play my mother. Uh, mother's now 103. <laughs> <laughs> this woman's great. Um, is there something that you make sure you do every day that has brought you or helped you to be successful? Yeah, how can we get to be you? <laughs> God, no, I'm not one of those <laughs> mantra, what, my person is a star, strong, smile, people in the mirror. No, I don't know. I just crack on, I get up That's and get on like with it. You, you know, I don't expect, or anything. you know, no, I'm just a... Uh... Okay. Of all <laughs> the characters you have played, which one would you most like to take out for a beer? Or <laughs> a beak, I'm not really sure what you'd say. Camilla Parker Bowles would be fun. I think Ruby oh. would be fun to have a drink with. Uh, I like Trevor. I used, yeah, I used to play the, the gay British Airways steward and that was a good one because I get so many upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> I like the ones that are just gay in the galley. <laughs> Do you know that? They come on, and when they're in the, uh, the what, would you like a cocktail, sir? Yes, yeah, so we will be serving that. And then they, they walk up, and then they go, oh, I tell you what, I've got a bitch in 2B. <laughs> I love those guys. They're just gay in the galley. I love them. And they, they love that I've been Trevor. And as I say, I get, oh, you can have that. You can have the extra caviar. Mm. But I always feel safe when I'm with, and uh, Trevor was based on a real guy, British Airways steward, wow. who's just the greatest. Yeah, he was like great. Um, this isn't it. A question is inevitable. Um, would you impersonate Donald Trump? Ugh. <laughs> it's been done. I mean, yeah. it's being done very well by Alec Baldwin every week. Thank God for Saturday Night Live. Um, I already mentioned, you know, the, the Hillary Clinton impersonation. It was just like when, you know, Tina Fey did Sarah Palin. It made me feel so much better about things. I loved it. Because mm -hmm. I'd never seen Tina Fey do brilliant impersonations. I, I knew yeah. she was a great writer, and I was so... I loved her doing that. But no, I wouldn't bother, really. I'd not, not, I mean, maybe in the, somehow in the next year's show it might come mm -hmm. into it. I wouldn't mind being Melania. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do a little Melania. 
I just love the way they were always standing in those aircraft hangars with their jackets just over their <laughs> shoulders. <laughs> just going. You just said they were desperate to get out of there. They weren't even putting their coats on <laughs> properly. And yeah, she's maybe her, but or Tiffany. No, I'm too old to do her. But <laughs> that just killed me. She never got much attention, did Tiffany's she? Tiffany's not Suddenly really allowed out. You can join in now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about my mom, Marla? Not her. <laughs> no, we're not bringing Marla from LA. Oh, okay. um, oh, what a Shanda. What is going on over here? <laughs> what, a, what the fuck's going on? I mean, we've had Brexit in England. It's a bloody nightmare. I mean, I remember before we were kind of in the EU, it was shit. <laughs> it was terrible in England. We had, you remember you used to laugh at us about our food, the fish and chips and the spotted dick desserts. <laughs> that was before we got all the influence from the French and the journal, we became cool. And then we vote Brexit, what's the matter with us? <laughs> oh. Will that make it easier for the next series, the worse it gets? Oh, I've written that angle as this year, her story arc. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, really, it's helped Angela, but no, yeah, it's is kind Brexit of funny. Or is Brexit in the next series? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay. Trump? Those two bit Brexit no. shits. Yeah, she has a whole song about it, yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens electorally. Yeah. You're going to vote, right? You get to vote I just, both yeah, countries. Yeah, I'm voting, yeah. Of How many course. countries are you allowed to be, to be a citizen of, I wonder? <laughs> Maybe you um, just go no, from just, country I'm, to country UK, I became an American citizen in 2005 and I'm allowed to keep my British citizenship. So I'm, I'm very lucky I get to the two great countries and um, have my say. Um, how much creative control did you have working with the execs at the brand new Fox Network? You pushed yeah, some yeah. boundaries in ways that the big three wouldn't risk. Yeah, it was a huge thing. I mean, listen, I had James L. Brooks. Mm -hmm. He was the big star. I mean, to think he just plucked me, you know, pretty much from obscurity and gave me a, wrote a brilliant TV show for me, gave me this opportunity, it was amazing. So he was like, I was under his wing. And uh, then we created The Simpsons, so they were very happy with us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as I breastfed the yellow people, and then that, that's what I'm known for now, you know, uh, the Simpsons, but I'm very proud to be associated with that. It was weird, you know, you were yeah. just like, he would just lock the studio did you doors know and James not let anybody. Brooks, or did he just... We met, and then he said, would you like to do a TV show? And I said, yeah, and then he sent me to the American Museum of Broadcasting and said, catch up on stuff, and then, you know, when you've had your baby, we'll do a show, and we did. And did you know Julie Kavner then, or did she... Was she... I know Julie. <laughs> I know Joey from Rauda. <laughs> Joey Kapner. <laughs> and, um, yeah, she, I love it every week. She's go, I think I'll do a different voice for this character. <laughs> <laughs> Once we had to. <laughs> 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 I love her so much. I love her so much. Well, it's one week we had to go to a throat doctor before the show because <laughs> we had sore throats because we used to work so hard. And I always remember I was, I was in and out. I got the spray and stuff. And then I remember suddenly I waited ages for Julie. And then I heard her go, no, I'm not doing it. No. <laughs> and I was going, what's the man? She goes, and the doctor was saying, but you have these incredible tonsil vocal cords, one shorter than the other ones. I need to show my students. You have them, because she had this weird. He said, please. She's, no, I don't want to be a guinea pig. Leave me alone. So <laughs> I got to get back to the show. <laughs> um, so, oh gosh. I love being with her, though. She's like my Ethel. Um. How many different actresses, celebrities are you channeling when doing Linda Granger? And <laughs> who Linda Granger. are they? <laughs> oh, Linda Granger. I love Linda Granger. Um, she's 100% uh, cancer free. <laughs> uh, I, I just love this guy, Lonnie Anderson. You know those beautiful kind of women that Ruby Romaine made up, you know. Uh, those TV stars, those, they, I see them in like Murder, She Wrote. Murder, She Wrote is always on at 11 o'clock every month. There's always a guest star like that on, mm -hmm. you know, Robert Goulet or somebody. Uh, so I just, yeah, I, I liked Linda Granger. She was fun. You could do anything with her, dancing, singing and everything. Um, 
Will Trevor be on the new series, please? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done Trevor. I've, uh, I could do though, yeah. It would be nice to have him back, bring him out of retirement, you know, <laughs> opening the Concord Museum or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, trip is nice. Uh, this is from somebody who wonders if you could share any memories of working with River Phoenix on I Love oh. You to Death. Oh. Yeah, that's where, I mean, Kevin and I, uh, he was a dear, lovely, he was, he was character in the film was very attached to me, Rosalie. He loved me. And so, and, and River, I mean, he was so affectionate and so gorgeous and he was, you know, he, um, he was very sweet to Mabel, my little Mabel. And he, uh, I would just remember one day him just being very, very tired and he became like a young boy to me. And he, I, I remember he slept in my trailer and I remember the warmth of him and looking at him mm. and with his little hat on. And I was, you know, he was a bit of a lost soul, I think. Oh, I was always concerned then. about him. And Keanu was with him and they were always oh. crazy and going out and partying. And Keanu was this big sort of guy and River seemed so frail and, very a lovely, lovely boy, lovely fellow. Um, we're out of question. That seems like a bad question to end on. Um, will you teach me or someone in the audience how to impersonate someone? <laughs> oh, God. Can you? Who would, uh, do you impersonate anybody? Myself. Yeah, oh, Patty Marks. Sort of. You're, you're Patty. <laughs> no, I can't. Do can you do, do an English accent, Patty? No, I have one foreign accent. It's just default What? Foreign. What is? It is like this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't. Where are you? No. You are French. What are you? What are you? French. Yes. It I is French. French. You can do French. French. But it goes right. No, here. just foreign. Just foreign. It is that in That's here. That's your foreign yeah. person, is it? <laughs> no, I can't do anybody. Uh, well, look who I'm trying to work with up I here. Know. Look, I'm being oh, well, you know. get somebody from the audience. <laughs> oh. uh, how long are you here for? I mean, not on the stage. I'm in um, America. I, you know, I come and go. I mean, I live in New York now. I love it. I. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I lived in Los Angeles for a long, long time, and I liked it there. I, I got to do what I wanted to do, and everyone's like, oh, bitching about LA. Mm. But if you get to do what you want to do there, it's a terrific place to work. There's great, you know, people go there to instigate what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Crews are fantastic, and it's always sunny, and it's, you know, I, I really enjoyed uh, living there. Um, but I, I like New York, I like it. Mm -hmm. And I like London, I, you know. I'm and uh, Ken Burns. And, and yeah, Ken, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm pretty you lucky. You'll, you'll I'm do pretty a lucky. show here? I, this, what? Will you do a show here? I'd love please? to do a show in New York. It's hard. There's not. I, I wish I could produce a show out of New York. You know, we, you, you, we, we, we get to do, there's more going on in LA. There's more going on in London. It's, you know, you never know when production is There's more going gonna on in be. London than There's lots than New York. going on in London. There's a, uh, and now it's so cheap. Well, we've, now we've crashed the pound. Oh, that's right. There's the Brexit. Um, that, you know, it's, uh, there's lots of stuff going on. I mean, all big movies get done in England, you know. It's, it's pretty different scene Let's than go. it was years ago. <laughs> But uh, I just let, listen, I'm getting on in. I think I'll be doing this till I'm 80, hopefully. You know, you've got to, no, you've got to, no, you and, I, can, um, I used to think I was getting old. I thought, oh, you can't do this anymore. And I think, yes, you can. I could do this when I'm 80, just impersonate everyone around me then. Well, and, We're all, I'll be impersonating all the people in my care home. <laughs> all the other people with like dementia. I can just impersonate everybody forever. What do you do at 81, then? <laughs> oh, Ju I'll be Judy Dench. See, Judy Dench is 81. Dench. She just had a tattoo she? done. I mean, she's so cool. She's very good. She's, you know, and the nice thing about older English ladies is that they look old. And, you know, American actresses are very, very, they're very, very nervous about getting wrinkly, aren't they? You know, they have to import the wrinklies, Judy Dench always says. <laughs> Is it easier to be an old actress in England It's than easier America? to be older in England, yeah. It's very easy to have grey hair in Paris. They love it. They yeah. let you have grey oh, hair? Oh, it's easy to be older in New York too, though. LA, you can't. Oh, please. No, you can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good. These are... That's good. Now, these, are, these are the moms in my carpool line. Jordan, get in the car. Get in the car. <laughs> Get in the car. I got a ice. I got a ice. You know, with the, the lip. 
and the thing. You can't just, oh. <laughs> I can't be doing with all that. I just, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. It's like that side goes down and that side, I don't know. I'm not going to get involved. As they say in New York, don't get involved. Don't get involved. You know, when I first came to America, I just loved New York Jews so much. <laughs> yeah, like, my friend, Katie Malt, she took me to Baldwin, and I created Fern Rosenthal. Because the best, the best, right? The ones that shout out when you're in the theater. Speak up, darling, we can't hear you. <laughs> I tried to do a show! <laughs> the woman just shouted out at me. We can't hear you. <laughs> what is this, the vagina monologues? What is she talking about, her fofo? Oy. <laughs> you with people, like, you know when you see Jews at the yeah, theater yeah. here. Oy. I'm one of them. I remember seeing a guy watching 300 Sundays with Billy Crystal going, oh, this is my first trip out since I had my lung removed. <gasps> <laughs> you know? But I love that they go to the theater, you know? Oh, I love them. When I saw Yento, <laughs> You saw and you, I saw Yentl, and the person in back of me kept saying, tell me when she's a girl again. <laughs> <laughs> the best, the best. Don't get involved, turn your jewelry in the city. <laughs> <laughs> the, the greatest. Mm -hmm. mm. My friend Katie Vogue, I remember her sister Cindy, also a publicist, and they watched Louis Malls, Au revoir, les enfants. And it was a very serious film, and they, afterwards they were talking, they were going, I love you, I love you. She goes, what did you make of the film? She goes, ugh, I've had it with the Holocaust. I got it. <laughs> I love these girls so much, they're so honest. <laughs> I've had it with the Holocaust. Been done to death, really. <laughs> Fabulous. I'm, I'm rambling now. That's good. I'm that's good. What what question should I ask you now? I ran out. Clothes. We love clothes. We love clothes. Oh, we love. Oh, I'm always bumping into clothes. you. Yeah, we like cheap clothes now, don't we? Get cheap clothes. The last fixed. time I saw you before today, <laughs> I ran into you on the street, and you complimented my coat. And I yeah. really, I told you to go get it, but you didn't. No, and I, I was going Prada, Prada. You went Zara, Zara. We were doing one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> It was so bad. You oh, were a close show. Have you got any questions for me? Yeah, any more questions? Uh, we'll take some audience questions, if there's any. OK, there. Recently, about a month ago, I saw Carol Burnett over at the Beacon. Did you? And she was fabulous as ever. And I said to her, have you ever been on SNL? And I was shocked to hear, no. No. I don't know. I mean, I, I, she always had her own show, and I, I was asked to be on SNL a few times. In the, I was always too scared because I wanted to so keep material no? for my own show, oh. and I always thought it was a guys' guys' show. And it was in the era that I was doing my show at Fox. Now Tina Fey and Amy Poehler changed that, but it was always an alpha male show. It's brilliant. Gilda Radner, though, I mean, obviously exception, but. Um, no, and I'm just glad it's always there and it's political satire and I thank God for SNL, but uh, I don't know if I'd be on it. I don't know if they'd ever ask me now, God knows. But yeah, I would, yeah, I'd love to, love to. Anybody else? There. Yeah, uh, could you talk about creating your characters, you know, the airport security women? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that was kind of, I don't know, I mean, it's controversial when you think about it, but I remember Eddie Murphy had been a white man a white girl in a movie, and I said, I want to be a black woman. A bla and I said, and I want to do the security girls. Body search. <laughs> Body search. And I remember them surround, we just, it was so much fun, and I get, I get good treatment going through security every time now, but I love that, and I got to be with all black actors, and I got to be black for the day, dressed and amidst them, and it was just so, it was, it was terrifying, and yet I, I, just, I just wanted to do that so much, and it worked out, and I did Shanisha, and then I did Chanel, and I just used to find it great wigs and hands and a wand, and I, I, just, I just loved it. I loved it. 
And you were, when in I was on a train the other day and with my kids on a subway and they're like, I'm their mom and I'm an idiot, right? And this gorgeous black man got on the train and you know, he's like white, he's like a vest on and stuff and gorgeous muscles and stuff. And then he uh, was hanging onto the rail and he went, looked at me and he went, that's why I love New York City. That's my nigga Tracy Army. Uh -oh. <laughs> Stupid up. My kids were like, major respect. <laughs> My son, you know, he's 25, he went, Mom, that is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Well, yeah, thank you. Were they ever embarrassed oh. with you before? No, they weren't before embarrassed then. They thought it was finally cool. <laughs> he was so cool, this guy. <laughs> Who else? Okay. Hello. Do you think that there is still a big difference between American and British um, I know there was, I felt that there always was about 20 years ago. Yeah. And I was wondering, and I also felt that that, that actually has changed. Mm, mm. Uh, and I was wondering what your take on that was. We stole all your comedy, so we No, but we different. stole yours. It's like, I tell you, Benny Hill is Ernie Kovacs. You met, I mean, if any of you are old enough to watch Ernie, Ernie Kovacs to go to the museum, it's weird. A lot of the jokes that Benny, uh, mm. Benny Hill had taken. Um, and, you know, uh, Sanford and Son was originally in a, an English sitcom. Um, yeah. Uh, Till Death Us Do Part and Three's Company. We always had this crossover of stuff. I think everybody watches everything now with Netflix and Amazon and binge, whatever, you know, and it's much, it's not like, appointment TV and primetime TV. Everyone watches everything all the time. Um, I, I, I think if it's funny, it's funny, but I, I just, I see so much crossover. And you, I, I'd never, I, 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 I think you get all the English references that were in the stuff I showed you, right? There wasn't much that you, like accents sometimes are hard, but uh, no, you're right. It's tw last 20 years, it's totally melded now. And, um, and, and British actors do such great accents, actually. And I, I like Matt LeBlanc doing episodes. That really works. I like that stuff. It's, uh... Tracy, what's your accent? Um, well, the people in England now think I sound kind of American, because, you know, mm. I guess I do, because I couldn't say things like, I'm just going to pop over to the shops. <laughs> I had to give up stuff like that. Now, I, I mean, I've lived here a long time. Mm -hmm. I still sound pretty English, but I mean, I've got an American sensibility. You know. There. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You were you were you did a show with French and Saunders. Yes, you? yeah, I loved that. I mean that was a great translate. Mm -hmm. That was just a brilliant character. I think they tried to do a American version of that, but it was um yeah, I loved that show. And they just did a film. And that's great. I love to see women doing films and opening movies and stuff like that. And uh yeah, Jennifer Saunders and, Fre and Dawn French. I worked with them in the 80s. Um, they're terrific. There. Hello. You were going to film yeah. Yeah. All right. I've done lots of theatre um, when I was younger, and uh, I would l love to do something in the theatre. I, I find it tough, though, going in eight times a week, I must tell you. And then the, can't hear, speak up, darling. <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> I did a tryout of a play at the Coconut Grove in Florida. What was I thinking? <laughs> Jay Press and Alan made me try out a play there. I mean, it's like they go down there to die and they make them go to the theatre. <laughs> it was the first two nights we had people under 30 and then it was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. It was terrible. <laughs> um, and that can put you off theatre. And I remember the woman coming backstage after the show, and I'd done all this one woman show, and I was in this all this makeup, and her husband's there in a zip up like Elvis suit. <laughs> you know, the, the depends lines. And then she just said to me, This is not your vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Critic here from the New York Times, bastards. Is it Frank Rich? And he got 
Ben Brantley, unless they like it, you're stuffed. You know, at least in England, you've got a few more critics. They dole it out. New York Times is a killer here, still. Uh, but no, I, if it comes up, darling, I love it. My first love. <laughs> I did the Delacour. I did uh, Taming of the Shrew with um, Morgan Freeman years ago. Bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, I did that for a couple of weeks. That was great fun, a little tryout thing. Yeah, no, I, if I find the right thing, sure. Who else? Yeah. Oh. I listen to real people. I mean, I think uh, voices, accent, coaches. Uh, yeah, they don't, they, because they don't know the real people themselves. So I, I just think, I just would rather, and now with YouTube, I mean, with YouTube, I would like to, there are some brilliant oh. people, but I would rather just listen to a real person myself and get them to tape their voice, I Do you think. tape yourself and listen to yourself over and over? Yeah, yeah, or I'll just, like years ago on the Tracy Ullman Show, I just, if I wanted to be someone from Brooklyn, I'd just ring a car dealership in Brooklyn and talk to somebody, because <laughs> that's what you had to do, you know. And they, there was somebody called, yeah, I gotta talk to my supervisor. <laughs> you know when they mash it all up like that? They used to talk that way. And I would just talk to somebody real. Because, I, you know, you'd get these Juilliard-trained voice coaches that, you know, would be... I, well, I don't know. I'd just rather talk to the real people. Well, you taught me very well, that accent, that foreign accent. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good job. Hello? <laughs> Do it again, Petty. How do you go? <laughs> I, oh, it's incredible. Um, <laughs> and what about the, the hands? Do you, like, look at tapes and... Figure out yeah, everything. Hands. It's about, and it's where the voice comes from. Is it in here? Is it back there? You know, it's like in part of your head it comes from, and you know, that's just oh god. Such I never got that. I was thinking my a, my voice comes from my mouth. You know. Yeah. Oh, I, not my <laughs> diaphragm. I wear a lot of fake teeth and a lot. I don't know. So it's. A more another question. You. Hello. Hi. Yeah. I myself am always cast as a character actor, and Kelsey Smith film right now is not, the, the, the little white girl is not being cast. Um, so I've decided that my friends and I are, are we're writing yeah. comedy, and I wanted to just get into your brain a little bit about do the characters or the caricatures drive the writing of the plot with your little vignettes, or do you have an idea for a story and then it goes? Yeah. Did you all hear that? Yeah, it, it's, it, I think that if the character is, for me, if it's true and I get it and I really want to be that person and I can access how they really speak, then that informs the story and I can write much better if I have a character than if I just do a story. But then someone will come in, like, because I write with lots of teams and they'll come in with a just a story, like that, that one about Karen, the drugs mule girl in the show, that was just written by somebody, and I didn't know how to play that at first, and I love when I can discover something, and the woman who was being interviewed with the blonde hair that was the genocide person, <laughs> and I didn't know till the day that it would be one of those slightly international people with blue eyes, I didn't know, and they're, they're the ones that surprise me and make it real on the day, but... Um, Write your own stuff. That's what I've always done. No one ever gave me a job, and they never know what to do with me, so I just do my own thing. And that was my strength, I think. You know, I'd never waited for the phone to ring. It wasn't going to happen. Right there. I love your Bollywood pharmacy. Oh, yeah. Just wanted to, one of those things, you go, I want to do Bollywood, you want to, do, you know, then my friend Bruce Wagner, who I wrote that show with, he just was, had all these wonderful lyrics, pharmacological lyrics, and he's very good with words, and um, that, just, that just happened, so, yeah, I, I, I like doing that too, but then after this, with those sort of sketches, you've done three, and then you go, everyone knows it's going to happen now, but it was fun while it was happening, yeah. You, standing up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Where, where'd you get them from? Oh, New York. <laughs> yeah, I was driving around New York. It was just one of those men, you know, that thought, you know, when I, um, somebody from the indeterminate Middle East, and they have a higher voice, you know? And he was talking about pushing people into the sea, you know, that are really violent. And uh, I didn't know whether to, like, you know, carry on with my journey or call the police kind of guy, you know. <laughs> but it was very sexy, you know. They don't know if they want to fuck me or fuck my car, you know. He was one of those kind of really confident sexual guys. You want to have sex? You like sex? <laughs> <laughs> hairy, hairy 
you know, he had and his love compartment was uh, with the, uh, the uh, you know, the uh, condoms in the, in the car. He was just one of those guys, you know, you like sex? I mean, being with him again, oh. <laughs> but then I became him and did a character of him and really freaked my husband and family out. That, that's the kids have never forgiven me for that one. That was really bizarre. Bizarre. Is there a character you're working on now? Uh, no, okay. I'll just see if I do okay. season three. I will just assess. I know that there's some now I can do again and some, but no, I, uh, uh, the, I just do it as, see what we need next year. Oh, Kevin, want to join? Kevin's Ooh. back. Oh, tell him it's shut up. <laughs> he said, shut up. <laughs> he told me to keep talking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I think everything's been said. Oh, well, I've thank had you, a, Tracy. Thank you so much. Thank One you, more everybody. Question.